the visitor, Anchor University, Lagos. Pastor W. E. Kumuyi is the foremost and influential man of God globally. He started the Deeper Christian Life Ministry with just 50 persons. And over the decades, that ministry has grown with more than five, I mean, 1,000 branches of Deeper Bible churches here in Lagos alone, with over 5,000 branches across the globe. As a founder of Deeper Christian Life Ministry, he has taken the gospel across many countries in Africa. The Deeper Life Bible Church as a brand for United Kingdom, over Australia, India, and North America, to mention a few. Pastor Dr. W. E. Kumuyi, several awards. In 2013, it was policy magazine among the 500 most powerful people on the planet Earth. In 2018, he received a honorary PhD degree from the University of Abuja. As a son, I have a rare and singular honor. Our father, Pastor Dr. W. Kumuyi, to open the impact 2022. Praise the Lord. Your time has come. To climb. Amen. To rise. And to be an impact in Jesus' name. Surely. This impact is for you in particular. The Lord touch your life and then impact your community, impact your country, and impact the world in Jesus' name. Now, I need to tell you a special plan. Today, I'll be dealing with the letter I in impact. Tomorrow, I deal with M, and then the following day, I come with P for power in your life. The following day, A, the action and the attitude that makes you an achiever. And then on Sunday in the morning, I come with C, how to cope and not cop out. And then, final day, final night, that will be for tea. And traveling to impart the world. I pray session will have an impact in your life. The Lord will turn your life around. Failure, the Lord will remove. Defeat, the Lord will take away. And then set you up, climbing, rising, moving higher. And the purpose of God creating you and putting you in the world. In your place at this time, the Lord will fulfill. Are you with me there? Your hands up, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Lord, I pray you open the windows of heaven. 
shower your blessings upon without exception in Jesus' name. Your blessing upon every life. Impact upon every life. And then you use everyone as a great impact in the world in which we live. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shout. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we're looking at Acts chapter 9. And I'm reading to you from verse 3. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, out about him a light from. And then in verse 4, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest In verse 5 it says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Then in verse 6, it tells us, And he trembled, and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. I come to verse 15 there. In verse 15 it says, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to him before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you a story about a man. And I want to transmit and transfer that story to your life. My topic tonight is interrupting the insignificant for an incredible influence. Interrupting the insignificant for an incredible influence. Before you become an incredible influence, your life Will be, trans will be interrupted. You see, this man we're talking about, it was insignificant. Who knew only a small clique, only a small group knew him, and he became the mightiest influence in the world of his time. And even until this time, anywhere you think about the change of the Roman government, and the change of the Roman Empire, you have to mention the name of Saul who became Paul the Apostle. Insignificant, and yet he became a great influence. I want to trace his life. And as I trace his life, I want to look at your life and understand it was when God interrupted him. He was on a journey. He was moving on. He thought, that's what to do in life. And then, all of a sudden, the Lord interrupted his life for good. And as we are here today, maybe you have your own plans. I'll do this. I'll go here. I'll finish that. I'll do that. The plan may be good. God will interrupt your life to give you something better. The plan may be bad. God will interrupt your life and change that bad, bad plan into a good plan in Jesus' name. Ever became significant. Ever became influential. Ever became a go-getter. Ever became an achiever. There was a point in that person's life when God arranged that something, somebody, someone, Something good will interrupt his life. 
if your life is just going on as usual, what you did yesterday, you are doing today, you'll do tomorrow, and your life is just going on like that, you may not amount to much in life. God looks at you like today. He's looking at your life. And he says, I'm going to interrupt him to make him an influence in the world. The Lord will interrupt your life. And the Lord will miracle in Jesus' name. He was journeying on. And then, bam, an interruption came. Can I tell you what it was? Number one, it was a chattered villain. That is, people knew that it could do bad. It could hurt people. It could be very cruel. It could damage things. And they chattered him. He was a chattered villain. Number two, foolish vagabond. His life meant nothing. It's so like so people meant, meant nothing to him. He was he didn't have a job on hand. He was doing all he was doing. Go to Damascus, get to Jerusalem, go over here, and everywhere he went, he did evil. That was his life. And then the Lord charged him. He charged victimizing people. People could not live at peace because ah, the man is coming and they will take shelter. They ran away from him. All of a sudden, something happened. That's what we call interruption. Wherever you are now, whatever you have done in the past, wherever you are journeying to, wherever you are journeying from, an interruption comes in your life today. You will be an influence in this world, significant in this world, mighty and powerful in this world, in Jesus' name. And then he was a chained victim. His character changed him. He down. He couldn't do right. He couldn't go up. He to do. He couldn't do. The evil he didn't want to do, that's what he did. He amounted to nothing. His life was a zero. And then the corruption of the Lord in his life brought a change brought a transformation and brought conversion in his life and he became a changed visioner. He now had vision, a man of vision, a man of idea, a purpose, a man of destiny. I pray to the Lord that that is what you will become in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, a chattered villain. Number two, a churlish vagabond. Number three, a charged victimizer. And number four, a changed victim. And number five, a changed visioner. God will impart vision in your life. Destiny in your life. You will make it. To the top, you'll make it in Jesus' name. Number six, a chosen up, searching through all the Roman Empire at that time. He said Jewish nation at that time, he wanted some, somebody to do something special, and the Lord chose him. That's how the Lord, during this week that we're together, for you. And the Lord will choose you. To do something great, something marvelous, something transforming in the field that you choose, that you are good, the Lord will lay on your heart that this is the way going there at you will make a mark in this generation. Jesus name. And actually, finally, number seven, it became a chief victor. A chief victor. It became victorious and he was the chief among conquerors and among victorious people a time in his life when the Lord interrupted him and that's what I'm talking to you once again on interrupting the insignificant to become 
woman of it. That number one, there is a significant through conversion. Through conversion. If there is no conversion, there's no change. If there is no change, there is no turning around. If you'll be going the way you have always gone, and then where do you land? But I pray that this day will be the day an insignificant person to become influential through conversion in your life in Jesus' name. Number two is the interruption that brought in Caribos their kill. The interruption that brought somebody in pain and then all of a sudden the Lord came and impacted his life and interrupted his life that tonight if you're sick over there interruption from heaven divine interruption that will clear illnesses and diseases away from you it will happen tonight in jesus name the in brought incredible the lord will be inviting you tonight the invitation to your iniquity and crime completely so that you can start with a clean slate you can start with a new life you can start oh, well look up rather than looking back i will look up i will look forward and i will go up in jesus name i'm saying it will go up in jesus name look at me who became influential through conversion. Uh, this man, Paul, and the reason we're bringing him as an example, as a model, because he himself said, the Father in heaven, God in heaven, chose him as a model, as a pattern, so that it'll be a pattern for your life. And look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, it says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me personal. He has enabled me. I think back, I look at the life I lived. I think back, I looked at the direction I was going. I look back, I look at the company I kept. I look back, I look at the visionless life that I had. But now I'm thanking Jesus Christ, my Lord, who has enabled me for that. He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He said, I never dreamt of this before. I never thought of this before. But now what I have, what I'm doing, this ministry, this career, and this vision, and this project, it never entered my mind. Of the great things you never thought you could achieve your own time has now come the new direction you never thought of that new direction has now come whatever is, whatever is the ministry and whatever is the achievement you never thought of what heaven has thought of and what heaven is bringing your way and then when the lord counts you ready that you say, yes, Lord, come, interrupt my life. Come, turn around my life. Come, change my life. Then the Lord will enable you. Everything he has created for you to look impossible now. It might, it might look as if, can I? Yes, I can. Can I? Yes, I can. Can I? Can I? Will I? Yes, I will. Will I? Must I? Yes, I must. I must. What happened? Like it happened to him. He said, I'm thanking Jesus. He didn't say, I'm thanking my star. People think it's their stars that you will bring them into, you know, something better in life. It is, see, I thank my idol. Some people think it's an idol. Some people say, I thank 
other people say, I thank my Lord, but he said, all those things will not work. All those things will not bring a change and a miracle in your life. The miracle in your life, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. It will enable you. It will turn your life around. Look at verse 13. He remembered the past. He said, who was before him? Was, was, was before a blasphemer. I pray that all the past life, you become past tense. Yeah. Every bad thing you ever did will become past tense. Every bad gag you ever followed will become past tense. Every regret you ever had, every tear you ever shed, past tense is coming. Yeah. In my life, present tense is coming. Present joy, present happiness, present strength, present intelligence. Amen. Something good will replace all those bad things in Jesus' name. He said, who was before? Before. He said, my life I divide into three parts. Before, present, and then future. He said, what I want the Lord to do, and what the Lord has done for me, is that he took everything before, he took everything of the past, everything that will have damaged my life, destroyed my life, everything that will have pinned me down, everything that when I remember, I'll say, what am I living for? The Lord said all that, he bundles together, and he put it in the past, I will never catch up with you anymore. bright present, a glorious present, a change present. And then he said, I also have a future, and my future is better than my present. Good guys, good girls, true. My future than my present. And my future is bigger than my present. It's so in your life in Jesus' name. The past all gone. The past gone. The past all forgotten. The past all wiped out. And now the present clean. The present good. The present glorious. The present challenging. This year will be the beginning of greater, higher bigger things in your life in Jesus name he said I was before a blasphemer a persecutor you know he never thought of his own life all he wanted to do is, is put happy people down to do is put pressure on others who are aiming higher who are going higher doing good in the past but he wanted all the people that had made the right decision and then he himself said i was injurious i injured people i injured their feeling i injured their lives i injured their ladies i injured their men i injured all the people i injured their office i injured everyone everywhere but he thanked the lord that in other people's life, uh, people say, what you sow, reap. But then God said, Paul, oh, come on here. Everything you sowed, I will not prove. You will not reap them. God is telling you, every bad thing you have sowed, every injury you have caused, every blasphemous blaspheme thing you have said, and everything you have made to other people, all the sorrow you tonight the Lord interrupts your life and he takes them a new person entirely and then he said I did it ignorantly in unbelief that man saw I discovered everything I called intelligence I was totally ignorant I called knowledge he said I know they are wrong 
he didn't know he was wrong. It's wrong and therefore was pursuing them and persecuting them but he said now the lord gave me instruction he gave me revelation he gave me education he said as the lord interrupted my life he gave me a new education the lord will educate you the lord will instruct you you will know that all those things of the ignorantly in uh, Unbelief. Unbelief. You see, Paul, a who he was a highly religious, highly religious man. He was a Pharisee. And he said, if anybody was religious, I was religious. You see, there are people, maybe you are there and I you know appreciate your life and I give glory. Sometimes we can be sincere. I, I learned of a particular person on the football field. He was there, and he was uh, driving the ball in the wrong direction and actually scored a goal uh, for the other team. Instead of scoring a goal for himself, there are people who think they are sincere and they are trying uh, to score a goal for themselves, but they are scoring a goal goal for the enemy. They are scoring a goal for the opposing team. But now, as the Lord interrupted me, that I was in unbelief, I was ignorant, and then I did everything in people. But the time came in his life, as was going on destruction, the Lord stopped him. When he comes to you and he stops you, it's for a good reason. It's to say, you can, you can climb higher than this. You can be a better person than better, higher, greater. That will make you look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, it says, But the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. What does that mean? Now, there are two words. One is grace. The other is justice. Justice is giving you what you merit. You're stolen, and then there's punishment. Justice. You are lazy, and therefore there is no progress. There is justice. You planted something in. Deep in a terrible crop is coming, that is justice. You have uh, done injurious things, you have injured your life, and then God said, that's it, final, that is justice. But the man said, if I had had justice, if the Lord had paid me the coin that I was uh, going to spend, I wouldn't be alive today. But he said, the grace, the grace of God, uh, just and then grace is giving you a merit favor on your life favor favor your death is unmerited favor he said and the grace of our lord and the unmerited favor of our lord was exceeding abundant abundant that means the forgiveness of god will be greater than your sin the freedom of God will be greater than your bondage. And all the good things the Lord will do in your life. You are young, you are a teenager, great. You have come out of school, great. There is grace. That grace so that you can go beyond yourself. You can what you thought you could do by yourself and the grace of our Lord was exceeding faith and love which is in Christ then in verse 15 it tells us it says people say and worthy of all acceptation that Christ came into this world of whom I have chief. He said, I never thought I could be saved of whom I am chief. He said, gather all the sinners together and look at them one by one. Look at all the sins they have committed. When he came up, 
were greater than them all. And whatever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are coming from, whatever you have done, as you look at yesterday and last week and last year, of your past life, you say, I'm so bad. If I were God, I won't even save a person like this. But the Lord said, you are not God. God's grace is coming on you. People that think they cannot be saved, tonight he has come to save you. He has come to grace. Interrupt your life with mercy. Interrupt your life with the goodness of heaven coming upon your life in Jesus' name. That's why it says this is a faithful sin. And what he said, this is worthy of your acceptation, of your accepting it. And grace is for me and you. And the same grace the Lord gave Paul the apostle, he'll give you tonight. The same grace he has given me, he will give you tonight. Because it is all. If the Lord will take your life, well, you don't know Paul, but you know me. Do you know Paul? Have you met Paul before? Do you know me? Greater than what he has done for me. Corrupted my life. Corrupted my life. I didn't understand what will happen. It is that interruption of my life that has brought me to where I am now. And I see you climbing. Climb. I see you going higher than I've gone. And I see you that I can ever achieve. And it will be upon All by grace, me by grace. your turn by what? By grace. And then look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, how be it for this cause I obtained mercy. For this reason I obtained mercy. For this purpose I obtained mercy that in me force Jesus Christ might show forth all. For a pattern to them, for a pattern to you, for a pattern to others. Believe on everlasting life. What the what the apostle is saying is, as the Lord had mercy on me, he took me as a pattern, and it's going to have this upon you. As the Lord brought salvation. Hide only there it, he will do the same thing for you. The night is your night, he will take that insignificant person, become an influential person by conversion as you turn to him in Jesus' name. Let's look at number two. There, number two, there is the interruption that brought people's their kill. The interruption that brought incurables, they're killed. There are people who are, you know, just lying down there. They're sick, they're infirm, they're incurable. They don't have to do. And their parents or their health alone just to rot there. We read a story like that. Sick all this long, and then Christ came, interrupted him with a miracle. Anybody there? The Lord comes tonight, he interrupts your life with a miracle. Look at this. This five, five, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity. 38 years, can you think about that? If you are not 38, think about somebody who had been sick, infirm, and invalid, and incurable from the time before you were born. Just lying there, 
lying down there expecting a cure and yet it never came he had, he had the giving up he said a certain man was there he had an infirmity, he had a disease, he had a sickness, he had an incredible uh, sin, 30 and 8 years. And then in verse 6, we're told in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie down there, and knew that he had been now a long time, a long time in that sickness, a long time in that disease, a long time in that uh, impotence. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The Lord interrupted his life. Just staying there with nothing. And then in verse 6, the man said, The impotent man said, uh, in verse 7, the impotent man said, uh, Answered him, Sir, I have no man. The Lord interrupted him. Can I assure you tonight, the Lord will interrupt you with a miracle. You know, what you've been asking for, Lord, look at this condition, look at that condition. Yes, there is no answer. Answer has come. Healing has come. Your cure has come. You know, it may not be physical healing. It may be that the brain is not functioning the way it ought to function. Sir, I don't remember anything. But now, tonight, you remember everything. All the people say, you know, since I came out of school, I to move forward. It's like everything within is dead. The Lord will interrupt your life. Because new life and new energy and new strength will come for you today in Jesus' name. The man said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in while I am coming. Another step it down before me. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Jesus said unto him, He never he had never seen Jesus in his life. He had never encountered Jesus, the healer, the savior, redeemer in his life. It was he was looking at the at the sea, at the pool. He was waiting for an angel to come. His eyes were glued at that pool until Christ came and jolted him off and interrupted his life. Interruption that brings miracle will come to you. Interruption that brings divine interruption that brings joy in your life. Jesus' name. You know, my friends, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, many people in life, many people do not like interruption. If they are playing uh, their football, they don't like interruption. If they are watching the TV, they don't like interruption. If they are even gambling, gambling away their lives, they don't like interruption. If they are doing the thing they have always done, we did not yield any good results, they don't like interruption. If they are lying down and they are looking at the pool where they think they will get their healing, they don't like interruption. But you know, God is so kind and God is so good. Even though you don't like interruption, it will interrupt your life. Because he knows if he does not interrupt better welcome if you keep on going and going and going the way you've always gone he knew that nothing better will come therefore he comes to interrupt your life and this impact this convocation is if all the things that happened in the past everything will be interrupted and then this new year will be a new life and you look back, all the things of the past and the weakness of the past and the regrets of the past has now gone. Interruption. Interruption. And so Jesus rise. He had never heard. 
take up thy bed. He never had anything like that in his life. And walk. You mean I shall rise up, take up my bed, carry my bed, and walk? I've never done that for 38 years. What you have not done for 38 years, 28 years, 18 years, 18 years. This many years today ever be your arise. You'll take up that challenge. You will walk. I said you will walk. Lo and behold, look at verse 9. In verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. Immediately that interrupt. 38 years of problem, he was made whole. He took up his bed and walked. Hold on. You see what Jesus said? It would have looked impossible. We can't do that. Arise. No, I cannot. Take up your bed. No, I cannot. Walk. No, I cannot. Don't say you cannot because a new day has dawned. Whatever you could not do before, when you hear that Jesus says, arise now, you don't look at yourself, look at your past, look at the 38 years, look at the fact you don't have any man, and look at the fact that you're weak inside. When Jesus speaks, power comes from that word. When you say change, don't say, I cannot change, hold on. When Jesus speaks, power comes with his word. When he says, see, don't say, I cannot see. When Jesus speaks, power comes with his word. He said, I will not come and hold you there. He didn't jerk him off. I will not come over there to jerk you. The word is coming to you from heaven. And as the word gets to you, power will come with that word. Then he said, take up thy bed. Uh -uh. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? People take me up and take up my bed for me. I cannot take up my bed. He didn't say that when he speaks to your life, the power to do what he has said, it will come. When he says, see, I never passed any exam in my life. Forget about that. Go and succeed. Go and be an achiever. I lodge me. It's never happened. I try, I try my best. It never happens. Don't talk like that. When it says go and be an achiever, then you go from this impact to say, thank you, Lord. And the very first thing you lay your hand upon to do, you will achieve. So, and then he took up his bed and he walked. Now, when you start doing what you have not done for 38 years, it will appear strange to yourself. It will look like, is it for real? Am I right? Can I maintain this? Can I sustain this? The Lord is talking to you tonight. And he says, a conversion and a change and a transformation coming in your life. When you start doing what you have not done for 10 years, for 20 years, for 38 years, you'll be strange to yourself. But it's not a strange. Jesus will back you up. You know, when a child tries to walk for the first time, that child stands up and that child begins to walk and then he falls and then he falls because he's doing it all by himself with natural, uh, with natural strength and natural force. But when Jesus told this man who had not walked for 38 years and he life with a miracle, he's falling. You will walk, you will not fall. You will move up and you will not fade. And the things that appear impossible, they will become possible in your life. He, he was interrupted by a miracle. Uh, there's another story in Luke chapter 7. Let me just tell you. The only son of a widow woman had died and they were carrying the procession going to bury that son 
the widow was there, and all the people were there, and then Jesus came. Tonight, Jesus has come to you. He did not join the profession to keep on marching with them to go and bury the dead son. He interrupted that procession and said, woman, with not. The Lord is interrupting the past in your life. And the Lord is saying, with not, cry not, a new day has now come. With the beginning of impact, and he touched the coffin, and that interruption brought new life into that young man. He will touch you tonight. Interrupt that procession. And the people who are crying for you, it will wipe out their tears. And you yourself crying for yourself, it will wipe out the tears in your life. In Jesus' name. Another woman, another woman, it was 18 years back by the devil. And then the woman was not even expecting anything or praying for anything. She's been like that. And habitually, she was used to that for those 18 years. And then Jesus interrupted her. I like the interruption of Jesus. It brings something good in your life. It brings healing in your life. It brings deliverance in your life. It brings power in your life. He laid hands on her unexpectedly. And the woman straightened up. I'm looking at you. You're straightening up. Everything that is bent. Everything that is crooked in your life, everything that right tonight, they all had their cures because Christ, the healer, interrupted them with a miracle. I'm looking for someone there. That the Lord. And as you are going on, as you are joining on in life, sickness. Sin, satanic affliction, poverty, regrets, DNA that I don't know what that DNA looks like. Interruption comes tonight and you are made whole in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. We're talking about invitation to blot out all your iniquity and crime completely. The you know, the Lord never accused anyone of anything. He said, I came not into the world to condemn, but that the Lord, the Father, is not your accuser. Satan is your accuser. Yes, your conscience will remind you and drive you to Christ, who alone can cleanse you and convert you and life around and tonight an invitation is coming to you the king of kings the great healer the great physician the great savior the great redeemer is inviting you tonight and he says come you are come he says i want to beautify your life he says, I want to make you a trophy of my supernatural power. They will do it. Yeah. And don't say, don't say, I am not a Christian. We're not talking about that. Don't say, I'm not religious. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about our creator. Look at that watch in your hand. Somebody made that watch. <clears throat> Just like somebody made that watch, someone high up there made you. And he's looking at that watch, at that creation. He's saying, that watch to be perfect. I want that creature to be what it ought to be. It's your creator talking to you. It's the power of God from heaven talking to you. So it's not religion, religion, religion. This is the almighty God saying, I want to take your life and turn your life around and make you a conqueror. Let me use the language you understand. I want to make you a hero. A hero is when we look at your life, are you not so and so? Uh -uh. Are you 
you not Mr. So and so? Is so and so? Are you not Mr. So and so? You said no. What do you mean? Oh, that one you knew, that one is gone. This one is a new. It's a new boy. This one is a new game. All the things I couldn't do before, now I can. Now you can. That happens when you honor the Lord Himself is giving you. And then in that invitation, the way you respond is in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore. He wants to interrupt your life. Repent ye therefore. He wants to change you. He wants to remodel you. He wants to amend your life. Repent ye therefore. What does repent mean? Does that mean cry? Not really. Does that mean get on the ground and roll? What does that mean? Does that mean to slap yourself? Not really. What it means is change your mind. Direction. You thought evil was good. Change your mind. Evil good is good. You thought by tried for you couldn't make it. Change your mind. You thought solution i will turn over a new leaf you cannot you have tried it before it didn't work change your mind your thought sin was sweet but now you know that sin is bitter change which means change your mind change your attitude change your direction practice change the way you are going repent it therefore you are walking Mind repent, you turn around 180 degrees. You know, some people they say you turn 360. If you turn 360 degrees, you'll be facing the same place you are facing before. But when you are facing this way and degrees, then you go the direction of new life will come to you. I said, New life will come to you. Or Be converted when parts of paper from the printing shelves and then you collect them together you could they are not sellable and then eventually you take them to the converters and first they can become currency they can become some useful exercise books they can become Good biographies. Conversion is to take what is useless and then make it useful. The Lord will take your life tonight. That useless life will become useful life. That life that will come up in Jesus' name. That cannot see beyond your nose. You can. You cannot see the future, and there is no future. Like a blind man, conversion will. And the Lord will make you see far. See far. And you will see a great destiny before you in Jesus' name. Repent ye therefore. For sins may be blotted out. Sins blotted out. Have you reached anything before? But you try to erase it. You use an eraser, but there's still something there that shows that something was there before. And if somebody wants to read it very well, if you read what you thought, you are erased. And then there's another kind of eraser. It may start with uh, that whitish thing, uh, and it has been covered there. Then you put a milton. People can still see because that part of the paper is different from the other parts. But you know what? The Lord has an eraser in heaven. He will erase that thing out of your mind, out of your memory, out of your personality. You will become so new. New life. New personality. New a new goal, a new life entirely, that the Lord may blot out your sins to fresh your life. 
times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you restoration. I will give you redemption. I will give you forgiveness. I will give you salvation. I will give you every blessed thing for salvation. I rejoice with you. That invitation is coming to you. And as it comes to you tonight, I pray you'll accept, you'll not reject in Jesus. And the Lord does not discriminate. He calls everyone. And he calls everyone to turn around. He calls everyone to change. He calls, he calls everyone to change the direction of your life and change your mind. Here, here I come. Make me the best you can make a human being. That's a great challenge for the Lord. You come to the and I'm Lord, I change all the past and I come to you, not by marriage, I want your grace. I don't deserve anything. If it's to deserve that justice, people, I come for today and then you put yourself completely in the hands of the Lord and see what the Lord will make of your life. And when people see you a week from now, a month from now, when they see you as we go into the new year, they'll barely recognize you. Everything would have changed. Change. Your character would have changed. Your language would have changed. Your outlook would have changed. And then your vibrance in life, vitality, the vigor in life, everything would have changed. And when you, you're not the sloppy one anymore, you're the one that stands right and you have a way, a place you are going and you are getting there and they will want you to be the model for their lives. Model. Champion, achiever, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I there? Where am I? The Lord bless you. The Lord interrupts your life tonight. With power from heaven, with miracle from heaven, with salvation from heaven. Lord interrupts your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to begin the work now. He cannot begin until you give yourself to him. Until you say, yes, Lord, here am I. I come, I come, I come. The invitation that will blot out all your iniquity and all your crimes completely. It's bowed and eyes closed. He's interrupting your life now. And you are cooperating with that interruption. And you're saying, Lord, here am I, I come. Lord, here am I, I come. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. You raise up your hand. I like this past life. I don't like, like the direction I've been going. This is not good. If I continue going that way, I will just be washed up with the, with the, with the water in the gutter. But Lord, I want to change. I want to definitely turn around in my life. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you. That's wonderful. God bless you there. A change is coming right now. If you are raising up your hand, please, please stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, God bless you. All over the field, everywhere today, just stand up, just stand up. Where are you? Where are you? Are you thinking of it? Well, think of it quick and then respond because this it's a great moment for you at there. Are you there on the right hand side, on the left hand side? Are you there at the back? Change for yourself. Christ will change it for you. And make better. He will do it yes for you. And the Lord will do that great thing in your life and turn you around a better life, a brighter life, a higher life. What are you? Far to the back. You are hearing the voice of the Lord saying, why don't you respond now? I invite you. The Lord invites you. Jesus invites you. The Savior invites you. And the one who is good invites you tonight. 
the Lord, here I am, here I am, God bless you, God bless you. As you're standing up, just tell the Lord, in, in, in any way you can tell the Lord, Lord, make a new person out of me. Lord, change my life. Lord, I need your conversion. Lord.